B'siyat HaDashmaya, we're going to start a very, 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 very important halacha. One that is uh, not so well known, or maybe it is well known, but not many people know the ramifications. And I think it's very, very important to try to go through the different gedarim uh, and understand exactly what's going on. So it is probably one of the most chomer prohibitions that we have uh, when it comes to eating a dova osa. Now, generally, when a person eats something that's treif, he's over on an issa. That's correct. The Gemara in Makas, our Gemara, our Masechta this year, Daf Tezayin and Mabez, tells us that when a person eats a bug, if a person eats a Dova Asa, he can be over on either four, five, or six Lavim for every single one. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? For every single one, that means every fruit could theoretically have three or four or five. And for each and every one of them, you could be over on six Lavim. Times that by how many bugs? It's not even worth it. So I always say that the Tubishvat is a wonderful zach and eat fruit and everything else. But if you're not going to be checking for bugs and you don't know the halachas, don't do Tubishvat. The minig of eating fruits is a wonderful minig, but it doesn't override all these lavin that a person can be over on. Okay? Now, um, the Prichodosh, the Prichodosh says that these halachas are kal be'ene odom, they're very light in people's eyes. But the uh, Chachomim were very makbid on it. The Zoya brings down that if a person wants Chayim Shalamala, life up there, so there's two things that has to be makbid on. What are they? Number one, Lush and Horror, and number two, no bugs. Those are the two things that the Zoya Kodesh brings down that a person has to be careful on. Why? What's the reason? Because there's so many assumed involved in each and every bug, a person has to be careful. The Pichodosh brings down that that's why the Torah wrote it so many times. We find that so many psukim written about bugs. And the reason for that is because the Torah wants to give us extra warning. Now, the question is, what's changed? You know, is it, is it that the fruit's changed? Is the metzias changed? The environment's changed? Why is it that we seem to have more bugs now than in any other time? So much of our fruit, so much of our produce is full of bugs. And the question is, why? So I'll give you two things. Number one, we see from Chazalus, even the Rishonim sometimes, when they discuss it, that the Medrash brings down that one of the clodders of Odom Arishan is that all the grass will be full of um, Zavuvim and Nemalim. The uh, Mishnah and Baba Basra also brings down the Sugya of bugs and Gemara Nsaita Yudches, Saita Daf Gimel, Sukha Yudches, Saita Daf Gimel, Chunin Samach Zayin. The Pichodosh says a very interesting thing. I'll tell you what the Pichodosh says. The Pichodosh says, Hakol mishtana lefi hamokim vahazman. Everything depends on the situation. So, for example, importing and exporting is something that never used to happen the way that it does nowadays. They never imported and exported like they do now. And therefore, I'll give you an example. The Californian thrip is something that arrived in Eretz Yisrael a number of years ago. And there was one shipment that had the Californian thrips there. And within one year, the whole air store was infested with these thrips. So importing is almost like, I don't want to say it, but it's almost like the corona, where like, you know, one person can bring in the British, UK variant of coronavirus. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you have hundreds and hundreds of people that are affected for one person. So it's the same thing with bugs. One person can bring in fruit, which is by the way, if I'm not mistaken, this is probably the reason why in America, they don't allow you to bring in fruits, vegetables, and these things. What's the reason? <laughs> what do they care? Bugs. Right. Because when they bring it in, in a big form, like for example, when they're importing it, so it goes through stages of cleanliness, hygiene, checking, all these sorts of things. You're bringing an apple or a bunch of grapes inside there, you have no idea what's inside there. There could be bugs, there could be all sorts of things, and you're bringing it into the country, and that could be all sorts of things. Right? So the whole side of the corona situation actually was from many years ago when they dealt with fruits and vegetables when it comes to importing and exporting, and that's one of the reasons why things have changed, because we have a lot more importing and exporting than ever before. Another thing is the uh, pesticides that they use. Uh, some of the, the things that they use in order to get rid of the bugs, again, some people do use it, some people don't use it, depends if they work or not. And the last thing is really our neshama. Our Averis, interestingly enough. The Gemara, uh, the Archaim HaKadosh brings down already 200 years ago, and he writes that the inyonim of bugs depends on the matzav of Klal Yisrael. So if Klal Yisrael are in a bad place, 
the months of bugs and fruit would also be in a bad situation, which is very, very interesting how that works. It doesn't do horrible now. No, that doesn't mean we're horrible, we're beautiful. It just happens to be we're not on the Madriga that they were on in those days, because as you read the Sadaus. And, um, you know, all right, listen, is, you can accomplish a lot. We had that last night. Anyway, there are, okay, on my side, there are three types of bugs, okay? There are three types of bugs. Listen very carefully because you have to know this. And Be'ez HaShem, maybe tomorrow we'll, I'll bring you some pictures. Right? For the, maybe we'll do it after lunch. Because if you do it before lunch, I don't know how many people are going to eat lunch. <laughs> I don't know. Like, or maybe after Tubishvah, like after, like, otherwise no one's going to eat any fruit tonight. So, so, so there's number one, there's a Sheretz Hamayim. That is a water insect. A water insect is four larvim. The Sheretz Oif, uh, Sheretz Oretz, a land insect, something that crawls on the ground. That's five larvim. And then he has Sheretz Oif, is a flying insect that is actually six lavim. Now, how visible does something have to be for it to be uh, Asa? So, from the Rishonim, there's no real nafkimino of the size. As long as you could see it, the Rashba says, then it's Asa, right? And the Rashi is this way, the Rachashokan Paskas this way, the Rachashokan Paskas this way. But if you can't see it, the Rachashokan says in, 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 in Yerodei Sim and Peydalet, We're not a Malachim. What, what do you want from me? I didn't see it. So I meant to know something I didn't see. The only thing is, you ever saw someone using a magnifying glass? Did anyone? Yeah. When it comes to bug checking, I'm talking about now. Yeah? yeah? Hmm? Why would they use a magnifying glass? I don't understand. You just told me that if you can't see it, it's okay. So why are you get a magnifying glass? You know what the answer is? What's the answer? If you're, if you're negligent... I'm not negligent if I didn't see it. What do you want from me? You know what the Archa says? Do you know when you open up your mouth, you're swallowing bugs? They're, they're so small that you can't even see them, but you are. So why is it mutter? The answer is because like, the Torah, Malachi Shoris, what do you want for me to do? The Bansham didn't give the Torah to Malachim, he gave it to us human beings, we don't see it. And therefore we don't see it, it's okay. The problem is, often, you, you don't know what you're looking for. You see a speck on a strawberry, it looks like a bit of dust. Take a microphone glass, it has legs and wings. Oh, that's why I take a microphone glass. Not to see something that you cannot see. To reveal if something is a bug or it's a piece of sand, right? That's why it's very important. Now, um, is it a blind person Is a blind person Yes, because at some people can see it. My brother talks about that. Now, one yeah, of the. Trust someone that gives them food. The same way he trusts anyone who cooks him food to make sure there's no boss of Holland inside it. No, whatever. Now, one of the Bochum, one of the Choshva Bochum, asked me, let's learn Badikas Tolaim. And I told him no. Which is quite unusual, because I like learning halacha, and I like teaching halacha, and I like the Olim knowing halacha, right? So why do I say no? The answer is because you could learn all the halachas in the Shulchan Aruch, but if you don't know what to do because you never saw and investigated and went to the, the sugya and practically, the maisa, right, on the ground, on the shetach, as they say, so then you, you don't understand. Now, I want to give you some very, very important klolim here, okay? And then I'll give you some examples of some fruit, okay? What has a chiv to check? You eat an apple. When was the last time you checked an apple for a bug? Never. Never. Is that good or bad? Beautiful. Do you have to check apples for bugs? You don't. For the strawberries, yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Bugs like strawberries. Bugs like strawberries, they don't like apples. <laughs> so I want to give you three very important klalim that you have to know. Okay? Klal number one. Mukhzuk batoyloyim. Mukhzuk Batulayim basically means that it's almost for sure it's going to have bugs. That is a Chiv Min Hatayra to check. It's a Chiv Midaraisa to check such a thing. Okay? That means Asa to eat it until you check. What is the definition of Mukhzuk? What's the definition of almost for sure? So in Roiva Poiskim, the Rashba, the Shach passing this way in Pedala Simon Lamad Hay, Sikotan Lamad Hay, the Archa Shulchan also, is if it's over 50%. That means if there's an over 50% chance that this item is going to have a bug, it's called a muqsat batalayim, and you have an obligation, the araisa, to check it, and it's also to eat it until you check it. Uh, can I give you some examples? I'll give you some examples. Green asparagus. You know what asparagus are? Artichoke. You know what artichoke? No. No. You guys never ate fancy food, you just eat like it's french fries and schnitzel. Like Artichoke has got, it's like a, it's like a ball like that has like all these feathers, like, I can't explain it. No? What's it you? Okay. Broccoli. Broccoli. Cauliflower. Okay, all of these are muhsuk batoyloyim. Corn on the cob. 
Corner on the corner. Now, again, in America, I don't know 100%. You have to ask the OU. In Eretz Yisrael, by the way, for sure. Corner on the cob is the book you cannot buy fresh corn on the corn on the cob. It goes between the kernels. You'll never even find it. It's muksa batanaim. Herbs, many of the herbs, like mint, is muksuk batayloyim. Okay. Oh, you have to know how to wash it off. Washing You're putting it under the faucet, it takes off the bugs? Is that how it works? Do you know that? Did you try it? No. It's muksa batanaim. It's here. The rice is also deep until you check it. Figs, figs. We will not be having figs tonight. We will not be having figs tonight. Because the color of the bug is the same color as the fruit inside, it's almost impossible to check. You might as well go to McDonald's. Much less assume going to McDonald's than it is eating one fig. What? You can't, you impossible. Why does it feel up against the light? Yeah, every single little piece, I, could, I guess you could do that. It would probably take you about a half an hour to eat one. Okay, now, that's muqsuk batalayim. Again, by the way, the examples that I'm giving you are examples in Eretz Yisrael, most of it in England and most of it in America. I'm not giving you a guarantee. Everything I'm saying applies also in America. You have to ask local cashless authorities, like OU, for example, Star K, have a lot of in when it comes to bugs. You can look online. You can see online what their latest things are. But that I'm giving you what most times is the case. Okay, that's Moksuk today. Let's move to the next stage. Miut Hamotsoi. Miut Hamotsoi means sometimes. It's the minority of the case will find bugs. Not always, not almost for sure. Minority, sometimes. Now, that is a chiv durabonon to check. Oh, that's the one second. That is, uh, means sometimes it's infected, and sometimes it is infested, but most of the cases it's not. It's a minority of cases that it is. It's a chiv durabonon to check. The rivosh wants to define what does it mean. And this, by the way, is the most common category that we have to deal with in fruits and vegetables. Miyotamotsui. Mir tamotso again means sometimes it's infested, but it's the minority of the case. So the Rivash in Semakuf Tzadiyalov brings down that what is the definition of a Mir tamotso? Koroiv lemechza. Close to 50%. So it's under 50%, because more than 50% is already, uh, is already muxuk, right? So it's under 50%, but it's close to 50%. Most poiskim are more machme. The Mishkan is Yaakov is a true in Yodeh Seven Yudzayin, where he wants to say that a Mir tamotso is 10%. If 10% of the time this will have bugs, that's a mir tamotso, you have do a bonon to check it. And as I pass in the maisa, you have shloim azam and obach as well. Okay? That's what mir tamotso. By the way, you should know that this, this halach is very similar to shatnas. Very similar to shatnas as well. Like how, much, how, many, how many times do you have to check shatnas? Like if most of the time this suit doesn't have, is it enough? No, it's a similar idea. Anyway, which basically means Rav Yashim, Rav Shlom, Rav Shlom Zaman, and Rav Shlom Zaman, and Zatzal, they all held that if 4 to 5 percent is considered to be mere tamotze already, so then, uh, then, you, then you have to check already. Right? Rav Falk, Rav Falk, for example, Rav Falk was a big bucky in bugs. He, in fact, was Rav Vaya's Rebbe. And um, he told me he wasn't such a machma. I know people think he was machma, but he actually wasn't. He just knew the halacha, and he told people the halacha, and people were like, who? That's such a chumma. No, that's not a chumma. That's just the halacha that he never knew before. You know, it's like when he wrote the tzniyas book. It was like, oh, he's so machma. He writes the tzniyas book. No, he writes the halacha. You just never heard of it, and therefore, for you, it's a chumma. When I taught Russian boys, and I told them there's a halacha called boyer on Shabbos, oh, you're so machma. <laughs> no, that's not luck, we just never heard of it. Sometimes we think things are hummus and they're not, because we never heard of them otherwise. Rafak, by the way, was not a machme. He was always looking to be makel, just he knew the Matthias, and the Matthias, unfortunately, was much worse than we think it was. Now, there are other Rabbanim who are more machme that we're not going into at this moment of time. Now, let's move on. Um, I'll give you an example. Let me give you some examples. Cherries. Cherries is a mir tamatsoi. In other words, when you see a bug in a cherry, it's not like, oh my gosh, that's so weird. A bug in a cherry? You're not going to say that. You'll be like, oh, wow, we found a bug. It's not going to be like so weird. Um, dried apricots. We're going to be having those tonight. Dried apricots. Apricots, whatever you call them. Um, dates. Blueberries. These are all things that it's not weird to find bugs there. If it's not weird to find bugs, that's a miet amotsu. Let's move to the next stage. We have a miet she'en amotsu. A miet she'en amotsu basically means basically less than 10% or like the Hummer less than 4 to 5% with Scheinberg Zatzal held less than 30% which basically means there's no Chiv to check anything that's a Mir She'en the definition of a Mir She'en means it's weird when you open up an apple and you find a bug in there that's weird there's generally no bugs in apples alright nobody here checked an apple so therefore there's no Chiv 
right? For example, uh, craisins, avocado, apples, pears, bananas, prunes, Brazil nuts, all of these things generally don't have bugs, and therefore it's not Nagea. Now, um, can over time, right? everything can change over time. Everything I'm saying now is subject to change, of course. If someone's listening to this year in a different place in the world, like, you know, Baruch Hashem, we have people in Hong Kong and Japan and in Italy and Gibraltar and in South Africa and in Germany. And I, I don't know the bug situation in Germany. I don't know the bug situation in Japan. I have no idea. So what I'm telling you is based on the investigation I've done mostly in Eretz Yisrael and in England, a lot of what I'm saying applies to America as well. But obviously, if you want to check America, go to OU or Star K, they have a lot uh, involved over there. Now, I will tell you something very, very important, which the Chochmas Adam says. And the Chochmas Adam says that even sometimes where you have no obligation to check something, you should still check. And he said, many times I checked and I found bugs and Hashem saved me. Does that mean I have an obligation to check? No. But it means that if you can, and if it's easy to, a person should check. Now, there is a famous cheat of the Ramban, I want to tell you. The Ramban says that if it's a major tircha to check something, and it ruins the whole thing, you're not mukhayif. What's the most famous example that fits into that? A raisin. Now, theoretically, you should be checking a raisin. Now, can you imagine if you had to check a raisin? Just think for a moment, how do you check raisins? So you cut it in half. You put it on the table, you smush it down onto the table, you check that there's no bug there, then you sort of scoop it up and eat it. I'm not eating raisins anymore. It's not like here. And therefore... No, that, 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 that's, I'm not talking about that now. I'm talking about now things that have become ruined by checking them. There are man holes, as long as it's not a muksut with taloim. If it's not, raisins or pasha is not a muksut. Maybe they're mir but they're not a muksut with taloim. The other thing is strawberries. Now, strawberries is a big, big problem. Uh, it's one of those sensitive shyness that people are like, nah, it's not true. Not because they don't believe the alocha, because they want to eat strawberries. That's often the reason. I right? say people why like, people don't believe in baby wipes, and people don't mean many alochas, because they want to do it. Because they want to do it. They have no problem believing, you know, Hilton Shabbos, a shyness, a bishol, or whatever. When it comes to something they want to do, nah, there must be a heter, right? That's how people are. That's how Eman Asot. Eman Asot. When it comes to strawberries, I don't know what to tell you. I called up the Badats in Eretz Yisrael. I was very upset with them. What can I tell you? I'm very upset with these people. I'm not going to let these people get away with it. I go into a, sh- a store that has a Badats Haksha, and they sell strawberries. I called up the Badats and said, excuse me, could you eat strawberries normally? No, chas for shalom. I said, so what am I meant to do? You have to peel them. You have to peel them, or you have to crush them. So whoa, 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 whoa. But you sell them in the store. Mm. We only give a hashtag on the selling. We don't give a hashtag on how to eat it. Because in the newspapers we write, the newspapers, who reads newspapers? We're busy learning all day. We don't read newspapers. How can it be so that we're gonna buy a newspaper and see what the badats hold up with strawberries? So I don't know what to tell you. It's a big problem, but I guess they don't provide them enough. So, you know, they asked me if I can help them, so we have to turn to any time over here and we're gonna try. And the, the you say it is like this. You cannot, there's no way in the world, anywhere, that I know of, maybe in Poland, that you can eat strawberries without doing anything whatsoever. Do you have to peel them? I don't think so. Do you have to blend them? I don't think so. How do you do it? So Rav Valk told me, he told me himself that he did a lot of investigations and he tried the following thing. He took strawberries and he ran it under the faucet as the water was running down. He took a sponge, a soft, like a soft, they make vegetable sponges by the way, but you could take a soft sponge, not the one, not the metal one that they have uh, to wash the dishes. They have like a very soft type of sponge and you just sponge it down as it, yes, it takes time, but you could do that, and that is the only way, because the sponge goes into the crevices and gets everything out. Without that, you can't do it. Now, he tried it, and he saw it, that it worked. He brought it to Eretz he tried it with Eretz strawberries, it worked. He showed it to one of the biggest bikim over here, he said, Sarachin, I don't know. He wasn't asking him to say it's mutter, but Pasha says, it's Tom, you could use it over here as well. I'm, I'm assuming it works in America as well, and therefore you'd be okay. So you could eat a strawberry, yes, again, it takes time. Take eat strawberry, you've got to sponge it down. You could you put soapy water, which also helps a little bit as well. But the goyim, I think the goyim already decided to do this. The goyim put it into salt water and they see the bugs mummies pouring out. Not that it bothers them because they don't care too much about bugs, but it's just disgusting even for them and therefore they don't eat that also. But it's just an amazing thing and Rafael told me you could be so much on that. You put it, soak it in salt. The best way is like this, okay? The best way to be out to all sheets is to make sure there ain't any bugs. Soak it in salt and soapy water for a few minutes. They and that, soap for this. Uh, yeah, they smell special soap for this. But even regular soap, it's fine because that. that no, it it's not because then it's going to make sure you wash it off for the later, which makes it even better, right? So you soak it in soapy water for a bit, and that causes the grip that the bugs have on the strawberry to loosen. And then you put it under the faucet, under running fast, fierce water. Sponge each one down. You can eat strawberries. Take off the tops, by the way. Take off the tops of the green part because um, under the green part often there's a lot of bugs over there. People don't cut. Well, you cut off the top part. Yeah, most people take it off anyway. If you just cut off the top. 
because because you no, know, the little dots, the little green dots in the strawberry, inside there they have bugs. The only way to get those out is A, soapy water, which loosens the grip, and B, with the sponge that gets rid of them. And then you'll be okay in that case. By the way, onions, you've got to be careful with onions, right? A woman was sent me a shayla last week about an onion. So generally with an onion, if it's a firm onion, you don't have to worry too much, because if it's firm, it can't get too much in. So you take off the outer layer, we always take off the first layer of the onion, and then we can do the rest. If it's very loose, you have to be much more careful, especially if it's a twin onion, and you've got double onion. You ever saw that before, a twin onion? Standing in between the crevices, something could happen. Now what happens, Okay, it's impossible, by the way, for us to go through every single vegetable and every single fruit to see what, how to do it, right? First of all, in every method in every country is different, so I don't know, I'm going to get a flooding of emails right now from people. What about this? What about this? What about this? I don't know. I'm not the bug expert in the world. I can tell you what I've learned. I've sat by the Badats. I've sat by Fred Falk. I've sat by many people who are hosting this and I've tried my best. But I can't tell you every single thing how to do it. It's impossible. What do you say? They, might, they probably are going to assume it. It's okay, they speak Hebrew, they won't understand English, it's fine. Um, <laughs> let's go on with both sides. Now, what happens if something wasn't checked, but it was cooked? Okay, what's the halacha? Shochanon discussed this by the New Day Simon Peydalasiv test, and he says that if you can still check it, then of course you should. Right, for example, corn on the cob. You cooked it already. Okay, so check it now. If it's impossible because it got all mashed up, then it will depend. If it's a muxat batalayim category, it will be asa. If it's only mir tamatsai, then you can be making in that case. What? What's that? Corn on the cob. Corn on the cob. Ravaya has a corn on the cob that he certifies as being kosher because he checks into it and he makes sure no bugs come into that one. Obviously, you can buy. But one that stum you go to the sugar by corn on the cob? Absolutely not. Have you ever heard of a buying? Oh, so so what happens? Have you ever saw? I, I, you buy um, frozen fruits like strawberries and stuff, and it says you have to blend it. Oh, they have it on the packages. Yeah. You have to blend it. Yeah, the American packages, a lot of them have on it. They're frozen strawberries, frozen berries. But it says the only way you're allowed to use this is by blending. What's the pshat? What's the pshat? So I'll tell you the pshat. I know your pshat, but I, 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 don't know, I never saw that, so I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I can tell you what I saw. What's the pshat? The pshat is like this. The pshat is that most of them wash it in a way that's pretty much good. But there's still chosh, there's something there. If you blend it, so then the bug is no longer whole. The issue of a bug is when it's whole because it's got a din of a berry. You're there, some kuf. It's got a din of a berry. A berry is never ever bottle. Once you make an ice barrier by chopping it up, so now it's no longer a bug and therefore it's no longer asa. Whether you want to eat it, it's up to you. It's a different child if you want to have wings in your soup. That's, that's your decision. But al pi alocha, there's no problem with not a berry. The only problem is how you're allowed to blend it up lachatrila because the alocha is a vatl isa lachatrila. You're not allowed to duff go along and be a vatl isa lachatrila. So the answer is it's not really an isa because it's a mere chain of months because they already washed it and never there's a mokim to be maker. For example, have any of you ever had the mullah yogurts? Not the ones they serve it, those are too fancy. I'm talking about if you go to the store and you buy, there's a y- mullah yogurt that's white on the bottom and on the top there's a layer of fruit that you mix in together. Mango, they have strawberries, they have little berries. You ever saw these things? You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, right. Uh, we don't sell it here because it's not us. We buy chosh of stuff. That's, you know, whatever. We buy the more chosh of uh. <laughs> Okay, so the rice are like this. Donate now. No. Anyway, so, um, so I asked, who gives the haksha? I'm assuming you ate it, so you know who gives the haksha, right? <laughs> ah, it has a it has Hebrew writing, it must be okay. So basically, um, Dain Westheim Zatzal from Manchester uh, gives the Herksha, gave the Herksha. Now it's really his son in law, I think, whatever. But um, I asked him, he was in my car once, and I said to him, How is it that you can make thousands and thousands of mullah yogurts with strawberry things? And we're not I'm like, what's pshat? So he told me that they go, they, they grow the strawberries, I don't know if they do it now, but in, that's when I asked him, probably about eight, ten years ago. They did it. Um, they did it for special strawberries from Poland that are muxa that they don't have to lime, and it goes through a very, 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 very special rinsing process. And that will be the heta in most cases, but even without that, many jams and jellies, for example, right, jam in England, jelly in America, what's the heta? Because a lot of it has bugs, they're using strawberry, a strawberry jam, you're telling me. So the answer is, is because number one, they wash it well, which makes it into meat, it's a very rare thing, and also it's blended as well, and they have no kavona to mvatl the issa, that's not why they're doing it, and therefore that's the reason it is okay. So that's pretty much the idea. Well, but so I think the idea of what we're trying to say here is before you eat, number one, make a bracha and have kavana. Think about who you're talking to. And number two, making sure what you eat is 100% kosher because if not, you can be over on many, many isram. Okay, everybody say, have a wonderful and beautiful Dubishvah.